Hi, welcome to Drawing Wild Washington. I'm your host, Jed Dunkerley, Associate Artist with the Burke Museum at the University of Washington in Seattle. In this program, we're going to be drawing life from the temperate rainforest. Uh, this is mostly on the Olympic Peninsula and the west side of the Cascades. It's foresty land that gets over 55 inches of rain a year, and it's different from the tropical rainforest in the Amazon because it's not tropical. It's cooler weather. In this episode, we're going to draw a plant, the western red cedar, uh, a fish, the prickly sculpin, and a herp, the western redback salamander. All right, well, I'm going to switch gears here and we're going to get drawing. The western red cedar. A very important tree, a very large tree. So the trunk, it's just got a single straight vertical trunk. And it starts at a point and goes down and then right at the end it kind of widens, kind of like a trumpet. I'm going to draw another line that goes all the way up to the top. And all the evergreen trees have this single trunk like this. Okay, now these have been known to get up to 200 feet tall. As a matter of fact, the tallest one on record is south of Lake Quinault and is almost 200 feet tall. Uh, the widest, they can get up to 20 feet across. The widest known species is up on uh, Vancouver Island. And then the oldest is about 1,460 years is what they measured by counting the rings and the trunk. Uh, indigenous peoples used to use these things and still do for a lot of different purposes. They're very useful trees. So I'm going to start drawing the branches and they're a little bit longer on the bottom. So I'm just going to draw some sort of sketchy lines pointing downwards. And don't forget to draw the ones kind of coming at you. They're a little bit harder to imagine, but if you only draw the ones on the left and the right, it looks like a cross section of a tree. And then as I get to the middle, they start to go out like this, and they're starting to get a little less long. And then as you come up to the top, they start to go upwards. So longer in the bottom, and I'm just drawing the branches like naked right now. And then they start to go upwards and get a little bit shorter here. All right. And then uh, when I start drawing the foliage, I'm going to, I can't really see it because it's so far away on this version, but uh, I'm going to draw flatter on the top and then kind of shaggy on the bottom like this. Okay. So I'll start to draw in a little bit of details here. You want to draw some shorter and some in the front kind of blobby. But generally, when you draw the branches, it, I draw them flatter on top and shaggy on the bottom like that. Okay? Uh, the wood is pretty soft and easy to carve. So it was used by Native American peoples for mask making, uh, canoe carving. The wood could very easily be um, sawn and hewn into planks for houses. Uh, and then it was also burned for cooking food and warming up the home in the winter time. The uh, bark itself has kind of a vertical stripey stringy pattern and it can be stripped off very easily and used for a car a weaving, weaving mats and baskets and drinking vessels and things like that. Okay, so I'm gonna go back in with my darker pencil now. And when I go in and I'm going to use some quick lines. You want to try not to get too worried about the details. You want to just get the basic shapes and some of the some of the uh, the textures in here. I'm just going over the top with a thicker, darker line. And you can see I'm not really drawing the the branches themselves. I'm drawing most of the foliage. And this, if you could look at it really closely, all the little leaves have kind of a scaly texture, almost like a lizard scale green lizard scales. And believe it or not, these trees, which can grow up to 20 feet wide, 200 feet tall, the cones where the seeds are, are about two inches long. Pretty tiny. All right. So I'm moving pretty quickly here, but try to do that with your pencil. I find that when I'm drawing cedar trees, it helps to let my hand kind of dance a little bit. And then I'm going to try to shade in one side a little bit more than the other show that the light's kind of hitting it over here. So I'm put a little bit of shading on the underside of some of the branches in the middle, and then I'm gonna do the left side over here like this. Okay, and 
and I'm going to give it a little bit of a smudge. And there is my cedar tree. And then if you want to draw very lightly, you can draw some more in the background. Just try to follow the same pattern. And the next thing you know, you've got a forest. And I draw these a lot in the background in my drawings and paintings. I really like these trees. Very iconic Northwest trees. Okay, so there you go. There's the first step to drawing your forest, the Western Red Cedar. Okay, next up we're going to draw the fish, the prickly sculpin. This is a pretty fascinating little fish. They spend a lot of time on the bottom of uh, the slow-moving streams where they live. And so I'm going to draw it sort of flat against the bottom. So just imagine a stream bottom kind of down here. I'm going to draw sort of a horizontal line down here. And this is where my sculpin is going to be resting. All right. So uh, we start with a pretty big oval for the body. I'm going to move it onto the left side here. And then I'm going to have an equally long kind of a taper. So it's going to be almost like a, a triangle that gets cut off here. It's about as long as the body. And then we screw it over a little bit. Uh, the tail fin, which is going to be like a rectangle sticking off the end of that. It's going to be a little bit wider than the body part I just drew. All right, uh, these can grow up to a foot long, but usually they're a lot smaller. Now, I'm going to do one of the things that I do a lot when I'm drawing, which is uh, measure my body here. So I've got about 17 centimeters long, and I'm going to find the halfway point. That should be about eight and a half right here. Okay, so that's the halfway point. And then I'm going to uh, measure it again. So half of that is a little over four. So that would be about right there. So the one quarter and the one half points are what I'm looking for here. And I'll show you what I'm going to do with those when I start putting the details and the fins and things on there. All right, so the dorsal fins, which are the ones on the back, uh, there's two of them, and they're like rainbows. So the first one goes up between the quarter and the half, and so you just draw a big arch like that. And then the second one goes almost all the way to the tail, like that. So two big rainbows over the back like that. All right, um, the pectoral fin which is the, the arm of the fish, it comes down right off of this line right here. So I line it up with the first of the dorsal fins, and it's going to start a little less than halfway down the body right here. Sometimes I'll draw a little circle when I'm doing an attachment point. And then it's going to be like a diamond, like that. It comes off the body like that. Okay. Uh, the gills are just in front of that, and it's sort of a shallow sea. I'm not talking about an ocean. So the letter C, and it kind of, it's a crescent, and it kind of points back and down like that. And then uh, the eyes are almost in the front. They are almost the very front, and they kind of bulge off the head like this. It's got kind of cool, googly eyes. So I'm going to draw some big circles up here for the eyes and have them stick off the front of the face like that. And then the lips, it's got these big pouty lips. Like it's always just sort of sad. So we're going to draw these big lips right on the bottom, maybe even bigger, right on the bottom there, okay? All right, um, all of the fins get ribs, so that means we're going to draw some straight lines going down like that, and then the same thing here, all the way down. This one, they kind of follow the direction of there, and then this one kind of comes out like this. This is going to go like that. And then it's got a spotty, blotchy texture here, and I'm going to do that with my, uh, my darker pencil. Okay, So I'll tell you a few things about them while I'm uh, doing in the details. Uh, number one, they, um, they, after they spawn, they're good fathers. The males, they guard the eggs until they hatch. So after they lay the eggs and fertilize the eggs, it's the male's job to guard the eggs until the little tiny fishlets hatch out. I don't know what the females are doing, probably getting food. And then um, they eat mostly insect larvae, which are the, the juvenile forms of bugs that live under the water in the streams. Uh, but they've even been known to eat their own young when times are tough, which sounds kind of harsh, but Animal world can be cruel sometimes. Okay, and they're called the uh, Cottus Asper, which I love that name. I'm gonna name one of my children Cottus Asper, Cottus Asper Dunkerley. 
All right, so I'm just gonna draw in some textures here. These spots kind of help it blend in with the uh, the gravel and rocks on the and the algae and stuff that's on the bottom of the streams where it lives. Helps it with a little bit of camouflage. And there's even some spots on the spines of the fins there. So, and you can texture that up as much as you want. Take a look at some photos of these little guys and uh, go to town drawing this camouflage so you can make it blend in like that. All right, so that is the prickly sculpin. And we got one more. The Western Redback Salamander. This is a really cool little thing. It's a herp. It's an amphibian. And uh, it's very long and snaky. It's called the Plethodon Vehiculum because it, uh, it, it, the male carries the female around on his tail during mating. And I guess people thought that was kind of like a, like a vehicle. So they call it Vehiculum. I thought that was kind of interesting. All right, so I'm going to switch to my light colored pencil here, and I'm going to draw two curvy lines, okay? And again, it's kind of long. You can draw it, you can draw it however you want. I'm going to start with a little oval up here, and then I'm going to draw a curvy line, and that's going to be his body. And then to make him fit on here, I'm going to draw it down like that. And then when I draw in the body, it gets a little bit thicker before it curves back down, and then it starts getting a little bit thinner. So just kind of watch out for your curvy lines and make sure they get just a little bit closer together. And again, at this stage, if you make a mistake, that is fine. Just go back and redraw it. We're using light lines here before we uh, decide what we're doing. All right, so that's gonna be the body shape of my, uh, my Western Redback Salamander. Um, these are no more than four inches long. They're little tiny guys. So this is actually bigger than the actual creature. And I'm going to start with the eyes in the front, kind of like the Sculpin. They have these eyes that sort of bulge out. So I'm going to draw one eye here, and then I'm going to see just a little bit of the other one over there. And these are just solid black. I'm going to put a little shine in there. And then the mouth kind of comes up the bottom right here. You can barely see it. All right, now, that distance from the eyes to the nose, I'll make the nose a little bit sharper there. Uh, if you do that about one, two, three more times, that's about where the front leg's going to be. Okay, and these are pretty skinny, so I'm going to draw a little rectangle back, and then a little rectangle forward, and then it's got these four little creebly toes, kind of goober-looking things, little ovals, okay? And now the back leg, uh, sorry, not the back leg, but the back front leg is going to be kind of hidden behind the body. And I love it when that happens, because then it means I don't have to draw as much. So I'm just gonna kind of hide a little nub back there and you'll get the idea. Uh, I'm gonna draw another line that follows the body all the way down. And then check this out. It's gonna come this way and touch this side. And then right about the same place over here, it's gonna pick up on the other side. And what that line does is it separates the body into two colors. The top is red and the bottom is black. So I'll just draw it in since I have a red colored pencil like that. And then you can see this black part kind of kind of gets crunched out here, but then it reappears on the other side to show that the tail's flipping over, which is kind of cool. Okay, so um, for the back legs, about two times the distance to the front legs. So there's one and there's two. That's where the back legs are gonna be. And the back legs are a lot like the front legs, just a little bit thicker. So I'm gonna draw a, uh, and they go the opposite direction, which is kind of cool. And that's true for all four-legged creatures that roam this fine earth. Uh, so I'm going to draw a little rectangle forward and then another one backwards. And then you can draw another one on the other side if you want, forwards and then backwards. And then the back feet have five toes, little goobly toes. One, two, three, four, five, almost like a baseball mitt. And that one, I'm not going to really draw the toes because it's being covered up by the leg. Okay, so that's pretty much what you got. Um, the cool things about these is that they, they can live higher and drier than any other uh, similar members of their species. I'm going to draw there's a little kind of ribbed texture right here. Um, they live under rocks a lot of times. They're really hard to find if you go out looking for them. Uh, I'm going to use my dark pencil now and just start drawing in the details and uh, fixing any mistakes I might have made. And I was drawing it in rough way. Um, other cool things about these is they have no lungs. So they get their oxygen through their skin, and which means they have to keep their skin moist or the whole thing doesn't work. 
So they live under rocks, they live under logs, near water. Um, and I'll draw this foot here. They uh, choose their mates based on their chemical signals. Huh, just like humans. Just kidding. Well, not totally. And then they have this really cool coloration I was telling you about. Take a look at some photos of them. They're called the redback salamanders for a good reason. So this line separates the uh, darker side, the dark side, from the red side. So I'm gonna darken in the bottom here and leave the top light. Or if you have a red colored pencil, you can just color it in red, like I kind of did. And then it's got some, uh, like I said, some sort of ribbed texture going down the middle of the body where presumably the ribs are. And then there's always some sort of speckledy spotted texture kind of on the top, okay? So that is your Western red back salamander. Uh, and that's gonna be it for now. So uh, thanks for watching the Burks Drawing Wild Washington. Again, until next time, don't forget drawing starts with seeing and thinking so practice seeing the shapes within the shapes, thinking about how they'll go together, and then there's really nothing you can't draw. So until next time, bye. What's that? You want more? Well, why didn't you say so? We've got coloring book pages available for each one of the ecosystems we've done a program on, and we've got the entire mural available as a silkscreen poster for purchase on the website. So check out the links and get yourself some more ecosystem art. Bye.